Hello everyone, I am Noor Zainab and in today's video, I am going to discuss about Newton's laws of motion. Isaac Newton was a scientist, astronomer and a mathematician of his time. He developed the laws of motion and the law of gravitation which is renowned today. First of all, in order to study the first law of motion which is also known as the Newton's law of inertia, we should know that what inertia actually is. Inertia is a property of an object to resist changes in its states of motion. For example, if an object is moving, it will stay in its state of motion. And if an object is at rest, it will remain at rest unless an external force is acted upon it. Inertia is directly related to mass. The greater the mass an object has, the great inertia it has. For example, a stone has more inertia than a feather. Objects with greater mass have more inertia and it takes more force to change their motion. One practical example of inertia is a tablecloth trick. When you pull the tablecloth very fastly, all the objects on the table remain still on the table. This is because they have mass and because they have mass, they have inertia, they will resist the motion and will remain in their place. Let's consider that there is a glass of water and there is a coin laying on a piece of a cardboard paper. If we pull the cardboard paper towards right, what happens is that the coin will fall into the water. This is because the coin has a mass and because of that mass, it will stay in its state of rest. Instead of going towards right side, it will remain in its state of rest because it has inertia. Because of the coin's inertia, the coin will remain at rest and fall downward instead of going towards right side. There are three main types of inertia. Inertia of rest, it is a tendency of an object to remain at rest unless it is acted upon by an external force. Inertia of motion is the tendency of an object to continue its motion at the same velocity unless it is acted upon by another force. Inertia also applies to objects in motion. For example, a fast moving object has more inertia than a slow moving object. That's why a fast moving car is harder to stop than a slow moving car because a fast moving car has more inertia. And the third type is the inertia of direction. It is the tendency of a body to remain in a particular direction. If an object is moving in one direction, it will remain moving in that direction. So the Newton's first law of motion, which is also known as the law of inertia, states that an object at rest tends to stay at rest and an object in motion tends to stay in motion unless it is acted upon by an unbalanced external force. So here are the main points of Newton's first law of motion. Inertia is an object's resistance, such as stopping to a change in its motion, even if it is not moving at all. Inertia is caused because objects have mass. The more a mass an object has, the more inertia it possesses. An object at rest stays at rest unless it is acted upon by an external force and the opposite is also true. This is the equation that shows us the first law of motion. It is that the net force acting on an object is equal to mass times acceleration which is always equal to zero. That it means that no external force acts on a body. So that's why an object in motion tends to stay in motion and an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless a net force acts on it. So how it is possible that the net force is zero? Either mass should be zero or acceleration should be zero. But every object has mass so mass cannot be zero. So acceleration is zero. It means constant velocity. As we know that acceleration is a rate of change of velocity. So if the velocity is same or it is not changing, the acceleration is zero. As acceleration is zero, that it is not existing, mass times zero acceleration is equal to zero force. So when no external force acts on a body, it will stay at rest or if it is moving, it will move in constant motion. If an object is moving, it will remain moving in the same direction unless an external force is there to stop it. 
such as consider a football let's suppose a football is at rest it will remain at rest unless it is acted on by an unbalanced force and if it starts moving the object will start moving at a constant speed and in the same direction unless it is stopped by an unbalanced force such as a net seat belts are the perfect example of how newton's first law of motion that is the law of inertia applies in our daily lives let's explore this important safety feature and how it works when a car is moving the passengers inside are also in motion if the car suddenly stops or changes direction like in a collision or sudden braking the passengers will want to keep moving at the same speed and in the same direction as the car was moving this is where the seat belt comes in the seat belt applies an outside force to the passenger keeping them secure to the seat and preventing them from continuing to move forward without the seat belt the passenger's inertia would cause them to keep moving potentially leading to serious injuries from hitting the dashboard windshield or being ejected from the vehicle so if in a collision the person is not wearing a seat belt the person will start to move forward although the car is stopped by a collision because the person is not wearing a seat belt it will start moving forward due to its inertia and it can result in severe damage so wearing a seat belt in a car while driving is an example of newton's first law of motion now let's discuss newton's second law of motion and how it relates force to acceleration let's suppose there are three shopping trolleys and they are being pushed using the same force and they are having different masses the force will cause each trolley to accelerate differently as you can see here you can see that the trolley with no mass accelerates more like it moves forward more whereas the trolley with more mass makes very little acceleration so here we can say that acceleration is inversely proportional to mass it means the more mass an object has the little acceleration it produces as force remains constant but if we say that mass are same like all the three trolleys contain same mass then acceleration and force are directly proportional it means that the more force you apply the more acceleration will be produced so if there are three quantities one quantity remains constant the other two the other two are directly proportional so we can say that acceleration and force are directly proportional it means that the more force you apply the more acceleration is produced and acceleration and mass are inversely proportional the more mass an object has the less acceleration it produces the newton's second law of motion states that force equals mass times acceleration it is force is equals to mass times acceleration ma acceleration is a measurement of how quickly an object is changing its speed so to move a mass you really need a force which is also known as force is equals to mass times acceleration the more force it you apply the more acceleration is produced it is means that the more uh, fastly the object is changing its speed and the more mass an object has we need to apply more force the greater the mass the greater the inertia that's why more force is needed so what do you think happens to acceleration with different masses here we are having three masses with different weights 1 kg 1 and 1/2 kg and 2 kg so more the mass the more force is needed more force is needed therefore less acceleration will be produced with more mass it will take more effort to get it big so when an object has more mass like 2 kg is greater than 1 kg more mass it takes more effort or force to make it move therefore it takes slower time to move it farther it is it is very slow and it has lower acceleration whereas with a half kg body it has less mass and it does not take much effort to get it moving therefore you can move it farther in less time it is that the lower mass has less mass and so because it has less mass it has low inertia and low force is needed to keep it moving so it has more acceleration
as we can see this whole graph by the equation of the uh, second law of motion which is force equals to mass times acceleration because the low uh, low kg mass has low mass so more force is uh, if mass is low then force low force is needed to make high acceleration whereas the 2 kg mass has high mass so more force is needed and less acceleration is produced so now discuss the third law of motion which tells us how the rockets move Newton's third law of motion is also known as the action reaction motion law it states that for every action there is always an equal but an opposite reaction So let's suppose if there are two bodies A and B, the force that the body A exerts on body B, it is force A to B, is equal in direction to the force that B exerts on body A, it is force B to A. Both the forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. So we can say that force A to B is equal to a negative force B to A. The, here the negative sign shows that the forces are equal in magnitude but their direction is opposite so the newton's third law of motion is also known as the action reaction for every action there is an equal but an opposite reaction so the rockets take off because of a force which is downwards from the bottom that makes them accelerate in the opposite direction like there is a downward force which is the action and due to this action and reaction force is generated which moves the rockets discuss the important points and vocabulary that make up the three laws of motion inertia is a tendency of an object to resist changes in its states of motion acceleration is change in velocity it is a measurement of how quickly an object is changing its speed direction or both and a force is a push or a pull the three main laws of motion which we have discussed today are that an object in motion tends to stay in motion and an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an unbalanced force and its equation was that for net force should be equal to zero on a body whereas the second law of motion states that the force equals mass times acceleration and the third law of motion says that for every action there is always an equal but an opposite reaction. Thanks for watching.